So obviously this Thursday is Independence Day, yes. 4th of July. And you know, I might be negative, but it's super unfortunate that in our country, you know, doesn't consistently teach about the history of our country. You know, that, that because people got their mind on, oh, people were slaves back then, like they got this whole misconception of really, you know, what, what reality was in this whole world. And if you want to really know about slavery, what about the world history of it? You know where all the slaves came from? From the slaves in Africa and the African leaders and tribe leaders that had slaves and they sold them to us. So if you want to get real, get real, okay? But anyway, but it's important that we teach our children. I watch some of these guys go out and they're asking these young kids, like, hey, you know what Independence Day is? They're like, yeah, fun's a lot, man, I'm a party. Like, no. That's not what it is. You might do that, but that's not what it's about. It's about our freedom. It's about the freedom as a nation. Okay? And look at this one. We still live in the most amazing, freest country in the world. If you don't think so, I tell you all the time, go live somewhere else for a little while. See how quick you come back. There's some other great countries out there, but none of them, none of them, zero, nada, zilch, are like the United States of America. And we're the most godly, blessed country on the planet because we're the first Judeo-Christian-founded nation ever in the history of the world. Okay, but don't, don't think those people were Jewish and you no, 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 Judeo-founded Christian nation. Okay, that's the fullness of Old Testament Okay, and New Testament coming together. So let's watch this video. share with somebody, post something. I remember years ago I had a neighbor, he didn't want to put up his American flag, and I was just like, why? He's like, man, people in America said, don't put that flag. Oh, Jackson, what do you got to that flag? <laughs> and, and Jesus, I'll do it. Please don't touch that Like, Like, this is America. You can wave all kinds of flags and you can't put up the American flag? This is America. This is no other place, this is America. So be proud of our heritage. Amen? Okay, so before we get into the message, let's first put a picture up there. And I apologize, can you put that photo up there? Linda, please. So, that's little Giovanni. And I was looking at Damien and feeding his little brother. And just, and, you know, I should have put a, I remember on vacation, I should have put a post out, I'm not post, a text out saying that the baby was born and, you know, we we're just going back and forth with them and talking with them, but Junior and Jacinda, who are our youth directors and who've been with us since the beginning, 13, 11 years ago, but we know them like 14 years, and uh, they had their second baby boy, little Giovanni. Look at him. And she had a smooth pregnancy, everything went well, and so if you didn't know, now you know. So maybe you shoot them a text and so on and so forth, and uh, when they feel they're comfortable enough, they'll be here with the baby. So, praise God. We're going to continue our series. There's more. Um, our focus verse this year has been Ephesians 3.20. 
You know, now all glory to God who's able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. And the focus of the more is the more spiritual maturity, more spiritual obedience, more spiritual efforts, and more spiritual empowerment. Let me tell you how important the reverence is for the Lord. You know, the, 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 the definition, I read it, you know, weeks ago, is literally the fear of God. And not being afraid of God, but being afraid not to have him in your life or overseeing your life. That, that we should fear. And in honor of, you know, Independence Week coming up. And listen, there's going to be a 248th year of being free in this country. And many have died and given their lives for our freedom. Many have died and given their lives for people's spiritual freedom. Listen, missionaries all over the world still die. A couple hundred thousand every year die for their faith. Look it up. Because they need other, they want others to know about Jesus. And sometimes we won't even give them a whisper about it. And some people are dying on, on, on behalf of it. And God was through millions and millions have died in the past so we can have the spiritual freedoms that we have in this country and as Christians. So I was just tossing things around and I wanted to share something about freedom, obviously. You know, obviously because we're free of sin, we're doing communion today. Jesus died on that cross to forgive us. He raised from the grave. He sent his Holy Spirit so we can live out this freedom. And it's so important to do that, you know. But sometimes life can weigh us down. And sometimes we can get negative. And listen, people go through heartaches and tragedies and challenges, and I understand that, okay? And I'm sensitive to them. But we still need to understand our freedom and how we need to be optimistic because of it. And a positive attitude will draw people to you. An optimistic attitude, everything can we be gloom and doom. So I cut in today's message, more freedom and optimism. And the reason why, you might think it don't go together, but it does. Listen, we're free in Jesus. We're saved. We have the Holy Spirit in us. Why should we be negative? Well, Pastor, you don't know I have no job. I'm sorry, but that doesn't take away your salvation. Pastor, you don't understand my situation. I'm sorry. So let's take away the Holy Spirit that's alive inside of you. Well, Pastor, I don't know my tragedies. I understand and I'm sorry. But none of that takes away what was given to us already. So if we're free in Jesus, we need to show it. When Jesus sent out the disciples early on in his ministry, they were saying, should we take food and money with us? He says, no, don't take anything with you. And when you get to a certain place, someone will open their home, you can stay there. And, they, and then one of them asked, and we don't know who she is, it's not so. It says, but Lord, how will they know we were like sent from you? He goes, they'll know by your fruits how you live. So if we're like, oh God, I'm man, life is so that's rotten fruit. We need to know. Hey, how do you do? You lost your child. Hey, God's got another one. Hey, I heard about you. Someone being sick. It's okay. God's in control. We're trusting in him. Doesn't mean we diminish the situations, okay? But we need to have it. How will they know? How will they know if we're walking around just like the world is? Doom and gloom and down and out. Instead of, oh, I'm sitting today. If I, if I didn't hear it today, my sickness or whatever's going, I'm going home and spewing Jesus. I'll tell you a story quickly. You may hear it. True story. I, I said it two months ago, but it's worth saying again. I'm telling you. This guy, he was a pastor at church. His son was in a playground at school. He fell off a swing and he unfortunately died. Six years old. His other friend was called to go pick him up and bring him to the hospital. And on the way, this guy's a pastor, this guy's a spiritual man, and he, he just knew something was going, what happened? He goes, he's dead, isn't he? And his buddy started crying, saying, you didn't do this and that. And the father's first words were, that son of a gun got to heaven before me. Now, is there tragedy in that? Absolutely. 
that he mourned and he's broken hearted probably to this day, which is about 15 years ago. A hundred percent. People in this room lost children. There's two couples here who lost a child. Okay, so, so I can't even imagine the pain in it. But the man's first thought was, he got the heaven before me. Does it change anything? No, but the attitude does. And Paul the Apostle gives us some insights in, in Romans chapter 8. So let's stand and pray, and we're going to read six verses. Lord, we thank you for your word this morning. Open our hearts and open our minds, Lord. Help us to understand the priorities of situations, the priority of things, Father God. Let us remember we are free from sin. The sin that we are free from, we've escaped hell, Lord. That we're going to heaven, Lord. Let us understand that and help it give us an optimistic, free attitude to know that, that life is tough sometimes, but Lord, you are greater than all these things. And help us to focus on that. Let us hear your word and be transformed by it. In your name, amen. You're going to see it, please. This is Paul the Apostle, Romans 8, verses 1 through 6. And we're going to beat throughout Romans 8 as we move forward, but just listen. So now there's no condemnation for those who belong in Christ, uh, Jesus. That right there should give you an optimistic mindset. I'm not condemned no more. I'm free in Jesus. And because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. There's another optimistic mindset, reason to be uh, positive, okay? The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not do. He sent his own son in body like the bodies we sinners had. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. Let me share something. Now, you know, I have another ministry, a men's ministry. You guys know my background. I used to be in problems, blah, 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 blah. No one can tell me that sin still controls them if they're in Christ Jesus. You know why? Scripture tells me otherwise. Let's read it again. And the body declares the, an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sin. So listen, the sin doesn't control us. We control the sin. Anybody get that? See, we remember the chair I told you about. Hold on, hold on, jack somebody up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Or you can love somebody up, John. Stop thinking that way, son. Your corrupt mind from all the years of all that junk. Let the freedom come over you. Let the optimism come over you. So sin doesn't control us. We control sin. He did this so that just the, requir the, the just requirement of the law would be fulfilled, satisfied for us. We no longer follow our sinful nature. Oh, that's cool, isn't it? Listen to that. We no longer follow our sin, but instead follow what? The Spirit. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about the things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Verse 6 is so important. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. The Bible says we can grieve him. If we can grieve him, that also means we can invite him. And, and, and allow him to feel good about what we think and how we live. And the sinful nature doesn't control us unless we choose it to be. Listen, before Jesus it did, I shared on one of my messages, I didn't even know I was sinning. I didn't know what sin was. I was an atheist. I thought I was just going to live life this way, no problem. But then until the Holy Spirit comes in and goes, no, no, no. <laughs> that was for me anyway. I don't have you. Peaceful, optimistic thoughts. That's what the Lord has. There's three main focuses Paul has in, 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 in chapter 8, okay? One of them is living life through the Holy Spirit. One of them is the future glory, talking about, this is, this, this is all temporary. One day we're going to be in heaven with Jesus forever. And then one also talks about being more than conquerors. That we're more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. And listen, not just a conqueror, more than a conqueror. So everything 
is taking care of in our lives. Everything that tries to tear us down and bring us back or hold us back or stop us from things, Jesus says I've taken it all away. As long as you keep your mind and your heart focused on the freedom and the optimism. Okay? This world's a negative place. Come on. Everything you read, everything you see, everything. This, this world, listen, listen. How are we going to shine the light over darkness if we don't shine the bright? You put on the news, you just watch for five, five minutes, you're already just shunned. Come on. Negative view, maybe it could be of yourself. I don't have no tanks. My life stinks. Things are bad, they're probably going to get worse. The economy is doomed. Not so true. No. <laughs> <laughs> Families are falling apart. School systems are in trouble. Churches are being challenged. The young generations are being swayed. And on and on and on. We can just keep adding all those things. And guess what? Some of those things might be true. But how about this? What can I do to help it? What can I do to help? What can I do to tip the scale? What can, how can, Lord, help me live my life in a way that I shine your light with optimism and freedom so other people will see it and go, why aren't you gloomy and gloomy? Because I got Jesus. Well, then you lose your job and you had to move because you couldn't afford your rent? Yeah, but I got Jesus. <laughs> see, my, my job and my, my rent and my where I live identify me. Jesus identifies me. He's the one who tells me who I am, what I'm going to do, and how I'm going to act. Optimistic attitudes, you, you say my cup is running over, you're like, thank you, Lord. A pessimistic attitude says, my cup's running over. Oh, God, there's a mess. Big difference. Same thing. Heart set, mindset, so important. And when you're free in Christ, okay, okay, we, we, we should be able to express it and show it. Proverbs 11, 27, whoever seeks good finds what? Favor. But evil comes to one who searches for it. You want to stay in the chair of sin? You're searching for evil. And believe me, the devil's sitting there going, come on, man. The water's warmer on my side. You bet your butt it is, that's where hell is. On this side, the water might be cold and frigid and shocks the system, but we're free. But we're free. Searching for good takes an effort. See, doing the right things takes an effort. I shared last month too about my son, one of his studies and one of the books he was reading for his class, and it said that why do people look at the Bible as a book of restrictions? It's a book of freedoms. We just have this mindset of, God don't want me to do this. Well, yeah, it's ungodly. Be free. Be free of who you are. Don't think of it as a restriction. Think of it as a good, as a good thing. An optimistic mindset is based, the whole word of God is optimistic. Even though there's stories of situations. I always say this, perspective dictates attitude. Our perspective of something dictates how we're going to act towards it. A biblical perspective is God's perspective. A biblical perspective is the Lord Jesus' perspective. Attitude is everything. We're going to break down Romans real fast. We're going to be a bunch of verses in Romans 8. But here's the first point. Listen, we're forgiven and our eternity is secure. This should give us an optimistic attitude. Verses 1 and 2. Listen, therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. That alone should keep us optimistic. When I pass away, I'm not going to eternal damnation. I'm going to heaven. We were just reading this morning in that devotion, and it talked about the cherubim. I don't want to get into the whole, it was a high, the highest level of an angel. And it says they were just in heaven glorifying God 24-7. Holy, holy, holy is his name. And we'll be doing that one day. It's probably why that dad said in that tragedy of losing his son, man, he got to heaven with full me. And who doesn't want to go to heaven? Okay, FYI, I was in traffic in New York at this week for like five hours. <laughs> and I was asking the Lord to please come. <laughs> please take us now. 
<laughs> and it was like two o'clock in the afternoon. Psalm 103, 12. Listen, as far as the east from the west, so as far as he removed our transgressions from us. See, he's taking all of our sin away. Okay? You know what the challenge is? We keep going back to it. You know what? Familiar. We're familiar with things. We're used to doing things a certain way. Well, this is just how I live. No, not no more. We're to live as Jesus wants us to live. That's that's the tug of war. That's the challenge. That's the, I'll use the word problem. But we change our attitudes and our mindsets and our heart sets, and guess what? We don't want to sit on that side no more. We want to keep staying here. This is the healthier place. And yeah, he's dying to our flesh. And that's okay. He's fine. Don't worry about it. You're fine. It's all good. It's all good. That, that's the healthier place. The problem is, sometimes we like this place. Because I, I sat in that seat for 20-something years. Actually, 30 seconds for me. So this one, I'm not even, not even a double the time. Here's the second thing. Jesus is at the right hand of God praying for us. Romans 8, 34. Christ Jesus who died more than that and was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Listen, so many people me and my wife pray for. So many people pray for us and we're so encouraged. But if there's anybody I want interceding for me, John Lamb, I'm not lying to you. It's Jesus. Because he's out there going, Dad, let's help him with that mindset. Dad, let's help him when he says new things to his wife and they're not cool. Hey, Dad, let's, yeah, I'll put myself on glass. Hey, Dad, let's, let's, let, let, he's interceding for us. He loves us and he knows everything about us. Okay? The closest people might know a lot of things. Jesus knows everything. But he's our creator. He knows it all. Who else do I want praying for me than the Lord Jesus? Interceding on my, on me? Dirty John sometimes? You're in heaven sitting next to the Father and you're going, hey, Pop, let me tell you something about John. He's a good man. He got some issues, man. Blah, 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 blah. Don't forget all names are in there too. Thank you. <laughs> Number three, our future victory is greater than our current pain. My daughter in law just sent me something that was about. You know how we live through the pain and we get through things and we're better off on the other side of it, you know. And I said to that little thing years ago, I should have acted in about pain. And when we trust God in our pain, he patiently aligns internal movements in us. And when we trust God in that pain, P-A-I-N, he patiently aligns the internal newness in us. Listen, pain hurts in the beginning, but if we trust God through it, we're better off on the other side. Always. Always. I consider that our present suffering, verse 18, are not worthy comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. And it's hard to wrap our minds around heaven sometimes. Okay? But I'm telling you, there's nothing that we're going to go through, okay, that won't be worth it. I mean, if you're really living for the Lord now, I'm not just talking about being some wishy wash Christian or, you know, some flipping back and forth Christian, but really living for God, trying to do the right things, dying to our flesh, denying ourselves, denying our sinful mindset sometimes, and truly allowing Jesus to shine in our lives and live our lives out. Sometimes that's very hard. One time somebody asked me to describe my relationship with Jesus, I said, challenging, painful, but oh, so worth it. Because that's what it is. It ain't easy. It ain't easy, but man, is it worth it. For the freedom that we have, it's worth it. James says, count it all joy when we face various trials. What do those trials do? They help us persevere and they mature us, he says. And Paul's saying the same thing. Don't compare all this mumbo jumbo, all this headache, heartache, all the junk of this life. Don't even try to compare it to the future glory. Let's just get through it. Look, look, together. Amen? Here's the fourth thing. We have minds filled with God's peace. Some might be sitting here, some might be listening going, not me, brother. <laughs> well, that's a choice. It really is. 
In the challenge, well, even the most challenging times, it's a choice. Romans 8, 6. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting your spirit control your mind leads to a life and peace. Leads to life and peace. So not just living, and peace. And the problem and the challenge is, whether you know it or not, when we don't have peace, it's most likely because of a sinful thing. Doesn't even mean it's something you're causing. It can be something that's coming towards you or at you from somebody else. And it disturbs us. If it disturbs us, guess what? It's not of God. If it's not of God, there's no little thing floating around in the atmosphere. It's of the devil. Who else wants our peace but him? And our job is to hold on to that peace. Because we don't want that sinful mindset controlling us. We want the spirit of God and the love of God controlling how we think who we are. I mean, none of you, I don't know, I guess maybe a few of you in this room I know this, but remember the Flip Wilson show, anybody? All right, all the, all the 50 and olders are like, yeah, he's the go, the devil made me do it. I didn't even know the devil was making me do it when I was living before Jesus. And now he don't make me do nothing. He shouldn't make us do nothing. We should have the mind of peace in Christ. And we control what we do and who we are. Here's the on Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Pastor Lane, I'll always tell someone who's a new Christian or a new believer, someone just coming back to Christ, you know, just take it slow, you know, like, you can't change everything. And like, I got saved yesterday, and I'm, oh, no, 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 it's a progression. But, but we just can't be stagnant. You need to progress. I said last week, I know people say 30 years in the same person. Like, I mean, 20 years ago, bro, it's still the same old nothing. You got to grow up, you got to mature. That's what the word of God shows us, right? Don't be conformed to the patterns of it. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Change your mind, our heart changes. Change your mind and heart, your life changes. Here's number five. We're almost done. The Holy Spirit helps us with our weakness. Romans 8, 24 to 26. Who hopes for what we may already have? But if we hope for what we do not have, not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. See, we're not on our own. The Holy Spirit's there to give me a hand. You know what my problem is sometimes? I want to take control. This. Sometimes pastors are control freak. I'm trying hard to break that. I really am. Ask my wife and children. But I want I want to control everything. You know, you know what happens? I wind up in the seat right here. Instead of this, letting God be in control. I was watching the Olympic uh, trials yesterday. Uh, and you know, these are the people that are gonna if they win their races and other stuff, they will do the Olympics. And, I was watching the, the, the 200, whatever it was, it was a race for the women. And the girl said, Jesus, take the wheel. I was like, that's what I'm talking about. She came in second place. <laughs> you know, Jesus, take the wheel. You always win. When you're feeling down, he picks us up. Listen, when you're hurting, he comforts us. When we feel alone, he can be our closest friend. Wait, anyone who's in a relationship with somebody will know this one. It's me, I'm give me some time right now. <laughs> I used to be on my head. Right? Right? Anybody? Yeah. I need to turn my head. Right? 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 The Lord says, have peace in me. Amen. And you'll never have to leave your loved ones. Amen. Years ago, I want to put some information on the last year. We used to have this thing where my wife would leave the house or I would leave the house. And as my kids got older, we did it, and that wasn't healthy for them to say. Because they'd be like, well, that's what we're going to teach them. And then we made a pact. No matter what, we will not leave that house, get in the car, and drive away. So my son got married. She now I'm really in trouble. And if you're watching, buddy, if you love you, listen, my son got married only a couple of months in. And one day, like 10 o'clock at night, he's ringing the bell. I'm like, what's up? Bro, bro, get out! Like, oh, take it easy, bro. Get out and go home. Go home, dude. Nope, go home. You know about it. And he's a pastor. 
I said, oh, I don't, I don't care you fall. Sit on the porch, make sure your wife knows you got a ring doorbell. Look at you, man. Hi, love you, sorry, we'll see you here. Don't you leave your home. No matter what's going on, God's there. And he works through others to help us sometimes. Amen? Number six, God works everything for the good in our lives. Romans 8, 21. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. There's a key word in this scripture. Because you're thinking, man, nothing goes my way. You might not love God. You might want him. You might know about him. You might pray to him. You might even accept in him. But Jesus said, what's the greatest commandment? Love me with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. So he wants all our love. He wants, to, he wants us to love him more than we love our children, more than we love our spouse, more than we love our jobs, more than we love our, more than we love anybody or anything. Then no matter what happens to us, we'll be okay. He'll work it out. He always does. You ever have something happen and uh, months later you go, man, he would look me here. A bunch of smile right now. That's what you would do. He's like, trust me, daughter. Trust me, son. I got you. Here's the last thing. This is, I don't want to say the most important, they're all important. But nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. People talk about losing your salvation, those their shines and some, you know, some uh, uh, denominations believe that. And again, I shared before, I don't think you can forfeit or lose your salvation. I believe you're probably never saved. Because course, you go to church, don't mean you're saved. Okay? But, but I believe anyone who truly accepts Jesus and tries to live a life for him, y- y- your salvation is there forever. So listen, listen, Romans 3, 38, 39. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angel nor demon, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from him. No matter where we go, our God is there. No matter what we do, he still loves us. No matter what happens to us here on this earth, okay, he's for us. He's on our side. And on that last day, he's right there. Come on in, daughter. Come on in, son. I got you. This should remind us of the freedom that we have and the optimistic attitude that we can have. It's so important. It's so others can see it. There was, I forgot the song by Torrin Wells, right? Uh, uh, I forgot the word that he's famous who had. He's famous through us. He's not down here floating around in a cloud or some, you know, some image. We're in his image. You want me to become famous? Tell people about him. Let me tell you what God has done for me. What he's doing for me. I don't know what he's going to do, but he keeps doing it. He can do it for you too. That's how he becomes famous through our lives. I'm not talking about his glory now, okay? That's just saying. <laughs> no. He becomes famous through how we live our lives. And then we tell people about it. Then they can live this also. Does that make sense? Remember? I'll close with this. Winston Churchill. Attitude is a little thing that makes a big difference. I shared this before, but me and Pastor Lance spots the way on the uh, parkway. I didn't like a nut. And then like, I guess they traffic and they had to stop and they were weaving it out. And as we got closer, they had like eight Christian fish on their car. Jesus is Lord. This and I said, girl, you almost met him today. <laughs> She's driving like, it's like, you know, she cutting people off. Waving the finger and it wasn't a thumb up. <laughs> John C. Maxwell, guru, leadership Christian guru, business guru, the greatest day in our life, the greatest day in your life and mine is when we take total responsibility for our attitudes. And this next part, I love personally, because you know me, I like it straight. That's the day we truly grow up. That's the day we truly grow up when we change our attitudes. Philippians 4 finally, brothers and sisters, 
whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. That's what the Lord wants from us. Let's watch this video when we close. <laughs> sets us free, we're free indeed. I had a thought after I was you know, looking for a video to close with, and I was like, wow, all those people who died to give us our freedoms, Jesus died to give them theirs. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word today. I pray, Lord, that we walk away with something, Lord, that we take one thing, maybe multiple, but at least one, Lord, and start to apply it to understand that because of the death of your life on that cross to save our souls. You've given us spiritual freedom and entry into eternity in heaven one day with you. Lord, I pray that we understand what a big deal that is. We don't take it for granted, Lord, and that that will give us a positive, optimistic attitude as we live our life here. Knowing it's not easy, Lord, but Lord, you're with us. And Lord, nothing can separate us from you, Lord. And we thank you for that, Almighty God. I pray, Lord, if anyone watching, Lord, or anyone who hears this, Father God, or listening now, Lord, doesn't know you, today's their day to get that freedom. They don't have to wait for another day, another moment, Lord, another hour. They can accept you right now, saying, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know you died on that cross to save my soul. And I accept you. I, I, I want this, this salvation life, this born-again life, this free life, this optimistic life. I'm tired of all the old stuff. And if someone has said that or thought that and they would connect with someone they know as a Christian or find a good Bible teaching, God loving church. If anyone's been off track, maybe they're, I don't know, just haven't been walking with you and just put you on a back burner. I pray today would be their day to get back on track and never, never to get off it again. And Lord, help us, Lord. To, to be free and optimistic in all that we do. And we praise you and we love you in your name. Amen. God bless you all. Sister Charlene will be up here. If anyone needs prayer, and I'll be here. And uh, our first time guest, please join us in the back. I'll give you a little gift just to thank you for being with us this morning. Have a great day, everybody.